Hello everyone, hope we're all good. Big shout out to KRCT Curious and Transport Limited. And a big thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the All or Nothing podcast with myself, Billy Moore. I'm in Waterloo and I'm meeting up with a guy called Jimmy Bannon. Now, Jimmy Bannon has an incredible story. His friends have put me in touch with him. He compared him to the Scouse, Howard Marks. Now, if you know Howard Marks, Howard Marks was, um, was notorious for drug smuggling worldwide. You know, kilos and kilos of cannabis. And if you've been to prison and you've read the book, Mr. Nice, then you know what I'm going on about. So I'm going to introduce you to Jimmy. You'll be coming down now. Hello, everyone. So this is Jimmy Bannon. Now, Jimmy's 77, and I've just been speaking to him about, you know, the stuff he got up to. And um, it's just it's just unbelievable. You know, you spent years in, in a prison in South Africa. You've, you know, you, you got arrested for, you know, probably the biggest haul you know, in the northwest, over two hundred kilos of cannabis. So, what went wrong? Where did it all start, Jim? Well, Billy, it all started in uh, when I was uh, at seeing I was in Jamaica and in Trenchtown, and I got offered um, some marijuana, but it didn't work out. And then eight years later, I was on the dock road in a pub, and I met some South African seamen. And anyway, I ended up about eight ounces of dab and poison. Well, I'd never smoked it in my life, and I was twenty-two, but. Anyway, I went back and smoked it, and it, it, the high was just so incredible. I thought everyone should do this, and so then I went on that mission. And anyway, I, I met a friend of mine who gave me an address in Morocco, in the mountains in Qatar, where they grow it. And uh, I went up there, and with a, a friend of mine, he became my partner. And anyway, I brought 20 kilo back, and then he went back and brought 40, and then we... We we went on for four years. We ended up, we took 200 kilo to Holland, we had loads of problems. Then we re recuperated. And then in the end, we brought another 200 kilo and to England, and that was when we got caught. With. And what year was this? Because like you were you, talking like the 60s and 70s, weren't you? Well, when I, when I first got the weed, uh, that was in 68. And uh, and that, and then uh, and the, the sentences back then as well. They were, they they were, were quite like, harsh. Well, yeah. they were a bit light as well. <laughs> really, you know what I mean? We got six. Yeah. We got six each. But after that, a, a year later, people were getting nines and all that. Especially smuggling off the docks. And the likes of like so, your, your friends compared you to like Howard Marks, right? The Scouts Howard Marks, and you can believe it. Now. You must have heard about Howard Martin, oh, his, you know, what he was what he was up to. And he was, he was a, a man of many disguises as well. My he? hero, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. well, Jimmy, do you still smoke weed? Oh, yeah, I still smoke every day, you know what I mean? Yeah, one thing, when when I was in Walton Jail, yeah. um, this because after that I got sent to hold a long time, but while I was there, this screw bought me a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, I think it was from the Guardian, and it was about the only woman in England to be given a license to grow marijuana, yeah. and it was the Queen's cousin up in Balmoral. She was an old one, you know. Anyway, she started growing the weed, and she did it in sequence. She did tomato, cannabis, tomato. So anyway, she found out the, the caterpillars on the, 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 the caterpillars on on the tomato yeah. crystallized in three months, right? With the weed, nine months. So it prolongs your life, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just... So do you think, I mean, a lot of people say there's a lot of benefits, you know, to, to, to cannabis and, you know, especially like CBD oil now. Oh, and, incredible. You know, yeah. I took that when I was uh, going through, you know, a cancer diagnosis, the, uh, the proper oil stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was like tar. Oh, yeah, I take you know? that. Yeah. yeah, so that was, um, I mean, uh, whether it did or whether it didn't, I don't know, maybe... No, in my mind, it was uh, it was working. But how did you then? Um, so I'm curious. So how did you like? What was going through you? What feelings were you going through? Like bringing that much, like twenty kilos, is is quite a lot. But then you've gone up to like hundreds of kilos. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what was the what was the feeling? How did you you manage to kind of evade like capture through customs and? <laughs> It was just, I don't know, we just had... Uh, just brazen? We, yeah, we were just brazen, you know what I mean? We, as, you seen that right up from my friend there, I mean, it yeah. was a devil-may-care attitude. We just, you know, we're, uh, 
And don't get me wrong, it's the money, obviously, which drives you first. Yeah. But the behind it, and it's always been, is I want people to, you know, uh, know that, about smoke. And, was and was that your plan? Them. Yeah. Yeah, like, that was the plan, yeah. Yeah, you because... Know, Turn that as many people on. We turn thousands and thousands of people on, yeah. you know. And uh, I'm proud of that because all this rubbish, all the propaganda, what's been going on about marijuana through these governments mm. is a load of shit. All right, people psychotic or schizophrenia shouldn't do it. I think what the, what the, uh, the the issue is today is that some of the um, some of the green that's being grown today is like is is mixed with like um, other substances. But it's like, not washed. It, it's yeah, got like it's too got, many it's got, chemicals. It's got in like, it. Yeah, but it's got like brown and, and crack and coke and everything in it. I believe so. Right. It's it's it becomes yeah. highly addictive. So we know what resins like eight ball and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Um, you know the rocky the Moroccan. You know yeah. the, you know that stuff in the lab and you know the Sputnik. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what I grew up with. Yeah. But now it's like it's the stars, oh, it's and cheese and poly. It's too yeah. strong. You know, mm. uh, it's very very strong and it's it, it just sends some people over the over the top. You know. So you what know was that? that? What was that stuff you got the first time from them, from them, them uh, African seamen? Durban Poison. What, they, they, what it's it? called Durban Poison. Durban Poison, what is, 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 is it? It's just the weed, isn't it? Pot, is it? Yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff, yeah. yeah it's and it's natural, you see. It's not like done under lights and all that, you yeah. know, so it's like... Oh. No, I haven't used, like, narcotics now, any substances for nearly seven years, but if I did, you know, I'd like to, I'd love to have a joint, but, like, it's a gateway drug for me because I've got that addictive personality you know it's well, like one too many in the thousands <laughs> never enough you know what I mean yeah but it's like so I, I, I always I often think you know I'd love to just chill off you know and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll have a joint and just like relax but you know in my mind I think where would it go from there I think you know a glass of a, a glass of wine that will come in next yeah. and then I go oh fuck it we'll go for it like your Jack Daniels. yeah and then I'll be off <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll be, I'll be on the KO and everything. You know what I mean? I would so I wouldn't want to risk my um, my 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 like recovery to be fair, but but I do understand the benefits and you know it's quite it's quite open now, isn't it? Mm. So what was like what was prison like, Jim? Like in South Africa? Well, it was pretty. It was run on run on like British lines, you know, because we we ran the place at one time, didn't we? So it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like extreme, like you know what you went through and anything like that. Don't get me wrong, uh, I had a, they don't like English there, so with, with me when I got there and they got the five, um, there's a lot of Afrikaans, and especially in the prison, just didn't because of the past history, they just didn't like. But anyway, the British consulate used to come every three months, so with the conditions like in most prisons, yeah. they all food, all shit like that, anyway. Uh, I thought, well, shall I start complaining? Uh, will he come down on me too hard, you know? And uh, But when the British consulate come the woman, I was with the assistant governor, just the three of us, and she said, oh, yeah, and I said, yeah, well, all right, yeah. Have you got any complaints? I said, yeah, hey, uh, a big folder, you know, complaints. <laughs> right? So in the end, the prisoners liked me, you yeah. know what I mean? And, standing off for them. Yeah, standing yeah. off for them. And anyway, I was I I I, I did that, and uh, yeah, no one only one fella ever gave me any trouble. Yeah. He was a bully, you know. And yeah. we were in bungalows, and he ran, he ran this bungalow. I wasn't in his bungalow, but he was a bastard. Yeah. He, anyone come in, he'd just strip him clothes, uh, or you know anything. He got the toothpaste, or anything like he just take it off. Just sacks them, bastards. Yeah. But then I ended up threatening him with a big piece of wood because yeah. it was on the building crew. I said to him, if you ever come near me, I said, turn your back, I said, I'll kill you. And he just, he no, backed yeah. off then, yeah. And you've written a book as well, haven't you? What's the title of the book? It's called The Great Divide. The Great Divide, and you can get that on Amazon. They had a little look, the reviews are great for it. Um, and that, that's your life story. Yeah, yeah. It's that's only 27 years, Bill. 27 years. Yeah. So you've got another... You've got another book in you, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the first part of the book. It's the second, because when I started writing, it's took 30-odd years, because I, I was a bricklayer, and yeah. I was working, and 
just do a little bit of night. It's not easy, is it? No, no, no. And it's oh, it's so hard, and it? you know, mm. you miss so much. You want to watch football games, you <laughs> get obsessed. Only the only time I fucking fucking right was when I was in jail. Right, because yeah. they had no time. There's no fucking football, or I wasn't missing nothing. So, oh, yeah. you know, but I know what, and I'm not kind of tried out here, and it was oh, the, the distractions were just, oh, you know, so much was going on in life, and like you said, it's not easy. So people out there who were trying to write a book, you know, you have to separate yourself from society for a little while and get, you know, knuckle down and write yeah. your story. That's what I. Well, I had no choice really, but yeah. So yeah. you can get the Great Divide. It's the Great Divide. The great yeah. Divide. I'm going to get Jimmy on a full podcast. I know him because I know you've got lots more in the bank <laughs> here. We've only had you on for like ten minutes, and it's uh, it's just been it's just been um, been quite interesting, Jim. Yeah. And with that, mate, thanks for your time. Thank we'll, you very much, we'll, Billy. We'll Thank you, you Billy. I, I, I'm really proud of what you do for people, mate. Well, look you know, you. no, I really am. You do really help people. You've been through the mill. And uh, you've come through and you've done good, mate. Oh, nice one. That means yeah, a lot. No, us. no, I really do. What you do for people is great. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Don't say I, was, I don't take the affirmation too well. No, no, just, but it's good to be acknowledged. And, Jimmy. <laughs> I like that. I love that. Thanks. Uh, all right, mate. Thanks very much. And with that, thanks okay. for watching. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>